morning. God is good. And we would like to talk about tribulation in this uh, Sunday's message because it seems that it is getting closer and closer and we need to be prepared for this coming because uh, the Bible warns us about so many are going to fall away. So before we go on to the message, shall we bow down our heads and pray? Father, you know, God, where we are, where we are coming from. You know our level as a Christian and how spiritual we are. But Father, we pray that you will throw, will show us mercy, will pour out your love, and cause us, Father, to be prepared for whatever that may happen or come in, in, in the near future. We pray, God, that we will not, uh, that rather we will take things seriously because the things that are written in the Bible, since it is written, it shall surely come to pass. So, Lord, we pray that you will not bypass us with your grace, you will not bypass us with your mercy, but rather dwell in each of our lives, in our homes and families, and never leave us nor forsake us. This we pray in Jesus' name. So, <clears throat> tribulation, and we'll be, and our text will be from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 1 to 14. You know, this world is filled with pain and, <clears throat> excuse me, difficulties. COVID-19 pandemic is actually a reminder that the world is cursed, is because of sin. Uh, but the world will meet will meet greater pains, not just this COVID-19. There will be greater turmoil, especially during the end times before Jesus comes. All these things that are happening is going to increase. If COVID-19 has pained us so much, prepare yourself for an intensifying increase in pain and even in, 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 in trouble. Jesus said to those that who endure the end during the tribulation will be saved. What does that mean? What does being saved by enduring to the end mean? And how will we know if we are in or near the tribulation? That is what we're going to talk about today. The Bible is given so that we may know how to be saved, how to prepare. Well, we are probably entering a time which we call the last days, okay? Where there will be confusion, according to the Bible. There will be calamities. And of course, along with it will be chaos. There will be trouble. First, even when you are following Jesus... You may have to go through storms of life. Following Jesus or being a Christian is not a guarantee that we don't go through the storms of life. And we don't judge God's love based on the winds or the waves. No matter how much trouble comes into our lives, no matter how strong the storms are, or how how dark the, the or how dark the days are. Remember, we don't measure the love of God by those things, but rather we judge God's love based on the cross of Jesus Christ. That is where His love is. But all the storms that come, the darkness that is in the evening, they're all just part of what is going to happen as we are entering into these last days. So even when we go through the storms of life, Let's remember that God loves us. God loves you. And His love remains strong. It is unbreakable. And Jesus laid down His life for us on the cross. That is love in action. So when in a storm, as we all are going to be in a storm, perhaps some of you are still in a storm, others are coming out of the storm, and others are... Just relax because they are out of the storm. The best thing to do is cry out to Jesus when you are in a storm. Okay? 
We are very mindful about hygiene during this COVID-19. We wash our hands, we put sanitizer, we do social distancing, we avoid going out there in the public. All those are good measures. But the best measure of life is to cry out to Jesus. The best. Worship is not about a place nor about a particular time only. But we worship God everywhere and in every time. And I pray that our worship will be rich and meaningful. Not only in the sessions here on Sunday morning, but every day in your life. So, let's live our lives of worship. So, what do we do in COVID-19? What do we do as Christians? Three simple steps. First, drink in the gospel. Drink in the word of God. Pray to God that the word would flourish in your life. It will bear fruit. That you will be guided. That the word of God will be part of you. As much as when you drink water, the water will become part of your body. So drink in the word of God. Drink in much and much of God's word so that you will not be dehydrated in times of trouble, in times of famine, in times of dryness. You will not be dehydrated because you have the word of God. You drink so much of the word of God. So help, you, help yourself drink the gospel. Help your children drink the gospel. Help your care group drink the gospel. Help your discipleship drink the gospel. This is a time where we need the nutrition. We need to be prepared. Okay? The blessing of God's word is even more. Second thing is, we have to live out the gospel. You obey God in living out the commands of scripture. To live lives of peace and joy that will not be victim that we will not be victims of fear and panic and anxiety live out lives of love next thing is give out the gospel in fact even covid night we can give out the gospel don't forget to give out the gospel in season or out of season in trouble or out of trouble don't forget to give out the gospel you meet your friends online, you meet them on Zoom uh, application, that's an opportunity to share with them because that is, this is the best time to do as many live in uncertainty, fear, and confusion. People need Jesus. People need the Lord. So before Jesus calms the storm in, storm in the seas, He wants to calm the storm in your hearts. Whoa. The storm in the sea is no problem to Jesus. But the real issue is a storm in our hearts. Because in a physical storm in the sea, Jesus can just speak to the sea and it will just be quiet. But the storms in our heart, Jesus cannot force this issue upon us. We have to submit our hearts to Him. So attention needs to be given to the storm in our own hearts. Question, do we trust Him? Are we tossed in fear and confusion? Oh, this is the time for us to draw near and ask God to give us the grace to live out that life of peace. We need His grace. Grace is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, but God gives us the grace anyway. The storms... Obey when Jesus says, be still. Everything that is out of control lives under the control of the Savior who loved you and gave himself for you. So trust God that there will not be one more month or one more week or one more day or one more second of the storm that is necessary for you. Don't be in a storm that is not necessary for you. He has, God has every power and authority to calm, calm, to calm the storms in your life. So, trust Him. Hang in there. Continue to believe and worship the Lord. The storms are faith-building expeditions. Without storms, we won't grow in faith. 
Draw strength from the Lord and be encouraged in your journey of faith. Let's talk about the signs of the end times. The disciples asked Jesus, Tell us when these things things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. Now Jesus told them that as they were looking at the temple, that the temple is going to be totally destroyed and none of the stone will be left unturned. But they were focused on the return of Jesus and how that ushers the end of the age. In Matthew 24, as we will be reading, in we'll start at verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out, that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So, when you see standing in the holy place, the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, Daniel prophesied this many centuries ago, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Wow. Let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. There is no time for that. Let no one in the field go back to get their cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great distress and equal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. Great trouble, huh? If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At the time, if anyone says to you, Look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out. Or, here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as a lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is the word of God. So when G 
the disciples asked Jesus when it will happen and how it's going to come. Jesus answered in a long way, told them a very lengthy answer, telling them that many things, and this is from verses 4 to 29, many things will happen before we come to verse 30. Because verse 30 tells us that the Son, of God, Son will appear in heaven and the sign of the Son of Man. So many things will happen, verses 4 to 29. And we will try to understand what are the sequence of these things that are going to happen. There is such as the beginning of the birth pains in verse 8. And then there is that tribulation that starts in verse 9. And then there is that abomination of desolation in verse 15, then the great tribulation, verse 21. So, there is a small tribulation, there is a great tribulation, a small tribulation in verse 9, and a great tribulation in verse 21, and the cosmic signs before Jesus comes, in verse 29, where the sun will never not shine, when the moon will not give its light, when the stars will fall from the sky. These things are the cosmic signs. You can follow along very easily, the tribulation. Then you have the abomination of desolation. And then you have the great tribulation. And then you have the cosmic signs. And then you will have the second coming. So that's very simple. That's what Jesus is saying. A sequence of events that will happen. But the temple will be destroyed. And the disciples assume that the kingdom will then follow immediately after that. That's why they asked, when will these things be? Referring to the destruction of the temple. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? They're expecting all that to come together in quick succession, right? One after the other in this manner. But Jesus here is telling them, no, my coming is not so immediate as you have imagined. It's not going to come immediately. After the destruction of the temple, there must be the passing of these events as Jesus narrated to them. Then a very important part of this whole prophetic, there is a very important part of this whole prophetic calendar. The phrase, abomination of desolation. What is this? The word abomination means something that is repulsive. It's so ugly and so hideous that it's so offensive before God. So something very bad is going to happen that results in desolation. That means destruction. Abomination of desolation. Something bad is going to happen that would bring destruction. Okay? Some people thought that this happened in AD 70, some 2,000 years ago. This was a time when General Titus Vespasian conquered and destroyed Jerusalem. That destruction of the temple took place there at that time. But this abomination of desolation refers to something that has yet to occur. It was not the destruction of the temple. Something that will be done by the man who is called the Antichrist. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, the Antichrist is coming into this world. Also called the man of lawlessness, also known as the son of destruction, and he will do something terrible hideous and so offensive he will oppose and exalt him he opposes and then he will exalt himself against every so-called god or object of worship he is so arrogant he is so proud then he will take his seat in the temple of god okay proclaiming himself to be god wow he will go to the temple and declare that he is god then say, I am the one the whole world is to worship. So the Bible tells us that this lawless one, this son of position, or men of position, is going to be powerful. These last days, the evil and wicked men are going to be powerful because he will be doing all these things by the activity of Satan, backed up by Satan. With all power and false signs and wonders. That's why many are going to be deceived. If you just uh, rest on the power struggles and power encounters, you can be deceived. 
Now, we are looking at the end time. Something that will happen in the future. Okay? It's about this Antichrist. The man who is going to do terrible things. And you see, man, imagine what kind of man is going to do such terrible things. And he's going to deceive the world into thinking that he is the one to be worshipped. Revelation 13 verses 5 to 7 says, He will be called the beast. He will utter the blasphemies against God. And all authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation. Wow. New world order. He has authority over almost every, everything and every country. When disciples asked Jesus, When will these things be? Jesus was saying, My temple will be destroyed, but the sign of my coming will still be a while longer, and there will be a long gap in between. How long is this gap? Well, maybe at least 2,000 years already, because Jesus has yet to come. And it's already been 2,000 years since he went back to, he ascended back to heaven. So these events will take place in the future. Okay? The abomination of desolation refers to the Antichrist who is yet to come. So we have a gap of 2,000 years. Is this normal in prophecy? The events that took place very close together are actually very far apart. The beginning of birth pains and the tribulations the beginning of birth pains is a period of false teachers wars rumors of wars famines and earthquakes so there are people who come saying i am the christ they're not saying i am jesus christ because in the greek it simply means i am the anointed one so there will be false teachers in the last days who would say they are god's prophets they are God's messengers. They have the anointing from God. They are the special ones. They are the ones who will lead you to God. Wow. There will be many who say, I am the chosen one, the anointed one. Not saying that they are Jesus, but they're saying they're messengers of God. And they will lead many astray. That's how, that's the secret weapon of Satan, okay? We have many people who claim to have special access to God, special revelation from God, but as if they are the only ones who know the will of God. You know the will of God. We know the will of God. Are they the only ones who know the will of God? Of course not. Those who press on and press into God, those who are in communion with God, God reveals His plan. God reveals His purposes. And then during the period of time, during this period of time, during the, uh, you will hear wars and rumors of wars, and then you will see famine. People will be hungry. There will be no, there will be dryness. There will be no rain, and there will be no vegetation. People will grow hungry. Animals will be dying. And there will be earthquakes. And, you know, it has already happened uh, last year. There were seri series of earthquakes that was happening here in the Philippines. These things have always been in the world. Nothing's changed. But during the beginning of birth pains, the difference is that the intensification of it all. When the birth pain starts, it's not really uh, frequent. But then as it moves on, it, uh, time is getting closer this birth pains get, get becomes intensified, it becomes more more powerful, it becomes more frequent, it will be more severe, and we know that the events are moving forward to the last days. In a parallel passage in Luke chapter twenty one, verses ten to eleven, it says there will be great earthquakes. And in various places, famines and pestilences like COVID-19. We are in pestilence, in pan pandemic. Now, we are in pestilence. We are in a worldwide pandemic. Pestilence, COVID-19. Is this the beginning of birth pains? After COVID-19, it can come COVID-20 and COVID-21. 
or COVID-20 A or COVID-20 B. If that happens and if more earthquakes come, if more wars arise, it could be the beginning of birth pains. Today, we could already be in it. These signs are not that specific, of course, unless you look back and see an intensification, an intensification of all. You look back. Before, it was not so intense. The famine, the catastrophes were not so severe. But now, it's happening more frequently. It's now happening more severely. When you look back, you can see the, the, the how it is increasing, how things are intensifying, and how time has, has traveled or journeyed. This is the beginning of the birth pains in Matthew 24, 8. A lady is about to deliver and the contractions have begun. The earth is in birth pains. It's intense. It's getting more frequent. And you know, the baby is coming. The tribulation is coming. The end is coming. So the tribulation, there will be people who will be persecuted in tribulation. Christians will be hated by all nations. Even in America today, you cannot pray in public. If there is any vestige or sign of Christianity, people get offended and they can sue you. Some will fall away. There will be many false prophets and many false teachers. They will be teaching the wrong thing. They will use the Bible. They will open the Bible. But they will be mixing it with fallacies and lies. There will be lawlessness. People will grow cold because of the great evil. They will no longer be fiery. There's no more flame in their hearts. And the gospel of the kingdom, of course, will be proclaimed. Hallelujah. One thing I'm not sure is whether the beginning of the birth pains and the tribulation will overlap. But they will come together, of course. The tribulation is something that intensifies and that the end is coming. The end is just near tribulation. Revelation 6 to 19 speaks about the time of tribulation. You will read in Revelation 6 to 9 about the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowels. But they're actually describing the pain and the suffering and the tribulation that will come upon the world during the end times. The seven seals will open up to give you the seven trumpets. And the seventh trumpet will open up to give you the seven bowels. The summary is given in Revelation 6. Corresponds with these words in Matthew 24. In Revelation 6, 4, The people will slay one another, and he was given a great sword. Wow. This is the rider in the red horse. He was given a great sword. There will be a great tribulation. There will be great deaths. There is a sword, there is a famine, and there is a pestilence. Who could survive that? Wow, I cannot just imagine. Those who have been slain for the word of God, because they will be bringing people to be killed. They will be hated by nations. If you're a Christian, surely you will be hated by the nations. And you may be slain for the word of God. And that would be a privilege to be martyred, of course. Then we read about the sun becoming black as sack sackcloth, the moon becoming like blood, and the stars fall to the earth, and the sky vanish like a scroll. Isn't that Matthew 24, the cosmic signs? And then will be the coming of the Lord, and you will see the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of the wrath has come, and who can stand? Nobody can stand that. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Hallelujah. We're not saying that those who endure in their faith earns their salvation. No. But those who are truly saved will endure to the end. Those who are truly saved because Christ is in us. When we are truly saved, Christ is in us. We are the Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And when we have the Holy Spirit, Bible says... Power will come upon us when the Holy Spirit, power will come as the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You know, that's a miracle of God's grace. That's a miracle of a new life. 
That's a miracle of God's gift of faith. So, if you're a real deal Christian, you don't have to worry because Christ in you is going to maneuver you and lead you to security, to success, and even to preserve you. Now, let's go back to the COVID-19 situation that we are in and the season that we are going through. It is actually a very terrible time. Many people are suffering. Many people who may not be infected with the disease, with COVID-19, because they have no work, no work, no pay, and they are out of a job, and they have no salary, they have no money, they cannot buy food, and the ayuda of government can only be given to just a couple of people. It's not given to everyone. And and so people are suffering. Their, their tummy, their stomach is craving for food, grumbling for food. And many businesses suffer. There are so many businesses that have closed. And if they have closed, it means there are so many who have who are unemployed. They have no source of income. And they cannot just get involved in a new employment or engage in a new business because of the many restrictions of the quarantine. Many countries are suffering. Okay? But one thing COVID-19 will do is that the prolonged suffering in this season will bring out and show up who are those who are real. Wow. And who are those who may not have really believed in Jesus? It will show. It will show. People in this time of darkness, those who are real will shine. And those who are not real will come out having no light in them. COVID-19 is actually a great separator. A quote of the great separator by the Reverend Singh. He said, Churches are suspended. Now, I don't worry about skipping church anymore. No more guilt. Maybe that's how you feel today. No more guilt. Because you are not, you do, you are not expected to come to church because of the quarantine measures. The perfect excuse for those who aren't that excited about church. They have an excuse not to come to church because of COVID-19. And that is what they want. They are not forced. They, can, they have a reason. They have an alibi why they are not coming to church. COVID-19 is a separator. It separates the committed and the nominal Christians. It reveals those who are serious about their faith and those who aren't that committed. COVID-19 separates the ones who would rather be somewhere else and the ones who would rather be in church to improve their walk with the Lord. COVID-19 is a separator. It separates those who want to play more and those who want to pray more. Can you just imagine? Before COVID-19, there are Christians who come seldom to church. And with COVID-19, they now have an alibi not to come to church. Can it just show whether there is light in you or there is darkness? This coronavirus reveals the true state of our soul. It is as if a light was suddenly switched on and the hidden things in the darkness of our soul become clearly visible. We will be known for our action. Actions speak louder than words. COVID-19 reviews through worshippers. It draws the line between two kinds of online worshippers. On one side, are those who think are those who think since no one is watching them in the privacy of their home they need not be at their sunday's best okay they watch a live stream service in a nightwear hands holding a coffee mug and with newspaper slouching on their sofa with their feet up on the coffee table on the other side there are those who worship at home as if they were they are in the sanctuary of their church they don't just watch they participate they stand to sing with the others in the screen and bow in prayer when it was time to do so they send their offerings they don't talk 
because they take uh, service seriously because the presence of God is there. They don't snap. Wow. They are not distracted by the noise and the demands of the kids. They're focused on worship. Wow. They listen intently to the word being preached online. They believe God is present in the sanctuary of their hearts. He seeks those who truly worship Him in spirit and truth. That is the Father. He seeks those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. COVID-19 reveals those who are true worshipers. It separates those who speak the word and those who live the word. COVID-19 is a great separator. It separates the selfish and the selfless. It tells us who are the considerate who think not of their own survival, but the survival of others even in their own country. COVID-19 is a great separator. Amen? It divides the faithful from the fearful, the devoted from the wayward, and the selfless from the selfish. Which side of the divide are you? Think and answer the question honestly. And if that is what you would see, today in COVID-19, what a day it will be in a time of tribulation. COVID-19 is nothing compared to the coming tribulation. If we are like this in COVID-19, we will certainly fall away and turn cold in the time of tribulation. But the great joy and hope is this. Those who endure to the end will be saved because that's a miracle of the new birth in your heart. You have Christ, you can endure to the last. Because it's not about uh, your might or your strength or your power. It's about the Holy Spirit in you. If today you are on the wrong side of this divide, this would be the appointed time, the appointed time to repent and to believe in Jesus alone. Nominalism is a heart that is cold, a heart that's not, that does not love God. It's a dangerous way to live your life. Don't live with that doubt. Don't live with that doubt, with a doubt until you meet the Savior, until you encounter Him, because it might just be too late. So, do come to God in humility, in brokenness. Acknowledge your sin, your sinfulness, your own helplessness. Recognize today that all your church going, all your seeming righteous works cannot change your heart. Ask God to do that miracle in you. Repent and believe in Jesus. Cry out to Him that He will save you and grant you a new life. That's the only way you can be saved. Maybe this COVID-19 situation is a great wake-up call. A wake-up call to the Church of Jesus Christ. A great wake-up call to men and women who need to be saved. May God help us to be on the right side of the divine. Shall we pray? Father, This season is revealing our true self. This season is revealing who really owns our heart. This season is revealing our core values. It's revealing who we really are. But Father, as we see who we really are, we pray that you'll come and intervene in our lives. That we will not remain, O oh God, cold and nominal. But Father, turn us around. Fill us with your glory. Empower us so that we will become much better Christians today and throughout all our days. We pray, God, that in the COVID-19 test, we'll pass and that we'll be ready for the Great Tribulation. Thank you, Father. 
for your grace and mercy. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you and have a powerful week ahead. God is good.